Hey guys, welcome to the new channel. This new channel is going to be having behind the scenes videos, tutorials, and I'm also going to be experimenting with this channel as well. I want to create sort of a community with this channel. So in the meantime, please bear with me and thank you. And I also want to remind you guys that you can get some Gak Attack t-shirts. I'm going to put the link down below. There's going to be uh, free shipping from the 28th to the 30th uh, if anyone puts in this code free love. Anyway, without further ado, let's learn some sprite animations. Step one, find the sprites you're looking for and Google that shit. I get asked a lot of questions that I feel that you can just Google, so here we go. Mega Man sprites, so I'm looking for Mega Man sprites. Mega Man sprites, bam, done. 0.23 seconds, I go, oh look, I go to images and bam. Done, high quality sprites right there. I don't want that, what if I want the NES one? There you go. It really is that easy, guys. So, that's step one in a flash. Step two, once you download your sprite file, you can simply click on it, drag it, and drop it into your project folder. There you go. Look at this. It's nice, neat, and organized. Step three, animating your sprites. Okay, so we got all our stuff here and I'm going to start animating my Mega Man sprite so what I want to do is I got myself a clip of myself here run in uh, I shouldn't have used those chairs I was, couldn't even speed vault properly over them uh, had a flu when I was doing this uh, anyway so back to Mega Man right so we're gonna have him running with me or racing with me here so that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna put that sprite into the comp here okay and this is this right here is the comp tutorial so once we got it in here um, gonna pre-compose that and from here on in I'm just gonna do the shortcut which is shift control C or if you're on a Mac which I am shift command C okay so we're going to make that in a comp, we're going to name it Mega Man Comp. Okay, and move all attributes into this new composition. Okay, so we're going to double click that, and we're in here. So what we got to do, we're going to zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and I'm going to use this, the quotations button, it'll bring up this uh, thing here that'll find the center for you, and I'm going to... Look for his running in. Oh, there you go. He's running. Okay, so then we're gonna go to composition settings and I'm gonna trim the composition to roughly the size of that. So let's try 50 pixels. That's pretty damn close. Okay, let's stick to that. There we go. So I wanna make sure that each frame that I move him, he's gonna be in the same place. So let's make sure he's on this, um, this line here with the guide. So now we're gonna start keyframing. Alright, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna push P here, P for position, and I'm gonna start animating it. Now, when you're animating the run, you're gonna, I'm basically gonna move um, his position like that, frame by frame, oh, just like that, and then I'm just gonna just repeat after that. I don't know how fast we want them to run, so let's do every three frames. I think that should be good. So for every three frames, I'm gonna move it to the next. Move them to the next. Um, yeah, to the next animation. One, one, two, three. Oh shit, that's two. One, two. Yeah, let's do one, two. And you can always test it out. And let's move it here. So first you want to see if he's staying still. You might have to troubleshoot. Uh, that should be okay. Or if he was here. Yeah, that makes more sense. His head is in the same area. So one, two, one, two. There we go. Let's shift it over. And it kind of, for some reason, that gets blurred. But. So it's a long process. 
Uh, and you just keep doing this until you have the full animation for one round. Oh, okay, so we're done that. So let's test this out. So he's running pretty slow here. So let's make him run faster. So we're just going to shorten it. I know there's scripts to make things faster, but I'm not that good at After Effects, to be honest. Alright. Uh, it's just So I'm just highlighting all of them and using Alt Left arrow key to shorten each frame by one frame so we get this huge line of keyframes alright so we shortened it by two frames let's see how fast it is now yeah it's pretty good go to tutorial comp and let's see how that is looks next to me what I'm gonna do here is gonna key go to color key so if I want to get rid of the background and then click, get rid of it. And it's transparent. Done. It's simple. Easy. To loop it, I just basically select all of it, Control or Apple C to copy it, or you can right click. Oh no, you can't right click. <laughs> and then basically paste it for every new frame. And then bam. Bam. And then you can copy it again. And then paste it. I know it's slow and inefficient, but if anyone has tips, please tell me. And now we can look at a bigger picture of how this sequence feels with the running. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now we've had that. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of um, the extra animations on the side. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a solid over it like that and then I'm gonna select track mat over here here and click alpha mat white solid so that means anything that is taking up space here will reflect onto this Mega Man PNG so watch so for example what we're gonna do is use an ellipse tool make a circle and look takes that up but I do it on the white solid not on the Mega Man PNG alright so we're gonna keyframe this bam like that like so so make sure it's all good and it's gonna be for every two frames until it repeats again so go here keyframe it next frame now I probably should have done this before copying it so just keep that in mind just so you don't uh, give yourself any extra work yeah, actually when I was shooting the Mega Man video I was uh, I actually had the flu it was pretty tiring but I came up with the idea and I told Tom about it and he's like yeah let's do it let's shoot this and yeah that's pretty much how the video came up it's perfect because Mega Man's having their 25th anniversary right now, so it's pretty happy about that. Oh, right. That's the full. Okay, perfect. So, so there, once I've got all of that keyframes, then I pretty much do the same thing. A copy, select all, copy, and paste. Uh, paste is Control V or Command V and basically do it again and if you want to go by one frame on the keyboard which is easier instead of scrolling it's uh, command or control right arrow there we go and I think that should be good so let's just test that out here alright perfect so that is animating for the sprite step four camera tracking in Adobe After Effects CS6 um, what I'm gonna do start camera tracking alright so let's do this if you're gonna do a platformer um, 
what would be best is to stabilize this footage because it even though it's pretty smooth it still can use a lot more fixing um, we actually used a Haig Mini Motion Cam. Um, it's like a really affordable stabilizer I got from the website. My buddy Tom Antos helped shoot this with me luckily and he's really good at using one of these. So yeah, even though we use one of these, we're actually going to stabilize this some more. And you can see, so we're going to warp stabilize this. And once it's done, you're going to see um, quite a big difference. Okay, and now we're done stabilizing this footage. Let's check it out. So it's a lot more smoother and it looks pretty much almost like it's been on a dolly. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's do some shit. So what we're gonna do now, now that I've smoothened that out, I'm going to create this as a composition. So Shift, Control, C. Command. Let's create the composition. <clears throat> so before I start 3D camera tracking, one thing I gotta do is actually roto myself out of this whole comp. Just a rough roto, really. The reason why is because I'm actually moving, so that's gonna mess up the track. We want to make sure it tracks everything that's just stationary, not in motion. So let's. This is what we're going to do. We're going to cut this out and we're going to start motion tracking this. Just a quick roto. We'll use a, I use an ellipse tool. It's easiest for myself just to manipulate. So let's go to the mask here. Then we go down and we're going to mask path right here. We're going to keyframe it. This is keyframing right here, this little thing here. So every few frames, it should be good. I'm just going to skip maybe usually like... Let me see every second and then move it and adjust accordingly. So it's nice and easy, nice simple roto, nothing too time consuming. Da, da, da. Looks, we want to see the chairs though. It's important because we want to catch, there's nothing in the foreground here and we want to catch at least something in the foreground. Okay. Okay, so now it's done. I'm going to, under my mask here, I'm going to subtract this. Just like that. So if I take out the visibility of the background, it's just going to be roughly just the background. Alright, so. I'm going to turn this into a comp, right? Precomposed. All right, and this is going to be our camera track. Camera track source. And that's what I'm going to rename it to. Okay, so let's track it. Let's turn this background back on here in the back and let's track camera. All right, let's see what kind of magic it works. Okay, so we're done camera tracking here and all of a sudden we have these dots and we have these like bullseye dart target type things appearing out of everywhere. Don't freak out, nothing's wrong, it's not going to be in your footage. Um, so now check this out, look at that, beautiful, this is a beautiful track right here. So After Effects camera track, 3D camera tracking is pretty damn accurate. Once you get a stable, if you get a stabilized shot and you have some good tracking points, so this what this stuff means, this bullseye thing here. Um, so you notice here it should be the wall should be flat when it's here. So it's roughly like that here. Um, so it's trying to tell you how it. So right here is perfect. Um, it's a good track. So it thinks the, there's a wall here, and on the here should be the floor, and it should be parallel to where the floor is going, which is pretty close here and there. Um, here this is where the wall would be leading towards. So it's trying to create the geometry around itself. So this is it showing you how far and you know where things are relative. So it's pretty close. Now that we know that this is a successful camera track uh, we're gonna create camera right there. Click on that. Creates a 3D camera. Oh shoot. 
and ooh, okay so we have a 3d camera now so if you look at active change active camera to top you can actually see it in motion whoa look at that that's the path of the camera which is pretty accurate because it should be like looking forward and someone as if they're running sidestepping like that so it's pretty awesome um, let's go back to active camera okay so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do this so here's the anchor point for Mega Man and I'm gonna change it right now I'm going to change it so that the anchor is right at the bottom of his foot right there and then I'm actually going to create a null what's a null object well so nulls are pretty useful because they're not actual objects and you can attach a lot of things to them there aren't any images or videos they're just they're empty objects I guess invisible objects so I'm actually going to create a 3D null so it's 3D all of a sudden I can twist and turn it um, and I'm going to make my Mega Man comp here 3D as well and I'm going to attach it to the null so and this I'll tell you why this is useful later but so instead of moving this comp here around from now on I'm going to move the null that's where I'm going to move it to okay so let's make him side by side now one thing you've got to notice is there's instead of just worrying about up you know X and Y now we gotta work about the Z axis yeah I said Z because I'm Canadian <laughs> okay the foreground is moving faster than the anything in the background so it actually is really important where you place your um, your objects or your sprites because you don't want them to be moving too fast or too far back I mean or too slow so because there's nothing wrong with the track it's a matter of where they are relative to 3d space so at this moment you just have to really play around with it until you find something that you think works right so let's say I wanna put him close by me but not exactly so I wanna I'm gonna put him right beside that mark right there so if he follows it then he should be around that z-axis but he's not so let's see it's be the judge this is we're just looking at things from eye so he's moving too slow because he starts right it right on it and then by the time we're here it's past him so that means we got to push him further into the foreground so we're gonna keep adjusting his size so we can make an accurate track so we actually want this to follow so so there is a faster way to find out uh, positioning is if you have an actual reference from your camera track so if I click to camera track source here I, and I check out the 3D camera tracker and I go to render track points right there and you see all these dots again um, so these are reference points to where things are in space so what I'm going to do is if I click here to that little thing right there and I right click it and I go create null from that location track null 1 I go position P for position and I found out the position of that so let's copy that paste it there so that's how close it is and if I move this on top of here like so you're actually gonna see that Mega Man actually stays on that part so that's pretty good so that's how we can that's the fastest way to find out um, the location step 5 keyframing your sprite animations alright so now we got him running but he's only running in a um, single spot so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move him we're gonna use the null again and I'm going to keyframe position right here, that little clock thingy. And let's see. And let's push him forward all the way. Let's see, all the way here. We want him to be somewhere close by me. So let's scroll over here. I hold sp and let's use the x-axis and bring him all the way to where I am. Cool so he's just going in a straight line okay so he's coming out because I guess because of the camera but that's okay um, 
don't want to go too detailed for this tutorial. So that looks pretty good right now. Um, now we're pretty much done. All we need to do here is add a shadow. So let's add a shadow. What? So now we're going to add a shadow here. I'm going to press Control D or Command D if you're on Apple on the Mega Man comp. And let's create a multiply um, layer right on top of that. And let's put this underneath so it's behind it. And we're going to orient the shadow to, that's going to match my shadow. So it's some really long shadows here. Um, now this is where it gets somewhat tricky. So we're going to just mimic it. So we're going to go to the scale here. So we're going to make a man comp shadow. Okay, so we're going to go for the scale here. Let's bring up, make it thinner. Let's see. You really got to play around with it to find the right. Yeah. That's going to be pretty good. It's close enough. You want to, if you want to be really good accurate, you just make it parallel to your shadow and it should be fine. So what we're going to do here is going to go effect, we're going to color correction and we're going to tint. Um, what I do is I just get the color of my shadow there and map it to the black as well. So it's the exact same. Now what we're going to do uh, you push T for the shortcut to get to opacity. So we're gonna make it about the same. Okay, so that's pretty good. And you'll notice like there's a blue tint, so I'm gonna add a little blue to this. Like so. Let's take that. And we almost got that, maybe add a little more blue. And that's pretty close let's say 15 percent alright and let's blur this a little um, fast blur maybe not so much let's say about one yep okay that's pretty good let's rotate this actually this way yeah let's rotate that so I push W this is the hotkey to for rotation V is for just selection and let's see how that looks let's render that out let's render it out and that is pretty good so that's pretty much it right there and that is animating sprites for you let's say I want to do a uh, add a slide animation here which I put in I just pre-animated a slide animation for Mega Man um, so let's say you want to add some variability to these animations. Uh, it's pretty simple and this you'll see is why null object is really useful. So what we're going to do is, because I adjusted the anchor point here, we're just basically going to copy it and put the same place as the slide animation, as the original Mega Man comp. So it's the same now, so I copy it and paste, Control C, Control V, that's what I did just now. Um, we're going to copy the scale, done, and then we're going to make this a 3D layer, and we're going to copy the position, the current position from the null object. So let's I push P here to get to position, so just copying and pasting the according positions. Okay, and bam, he's right there, and I'm going to attach this, I'm gonna use this little thingy here, whoa! Attach it to the null. Bam! And he's sticking by it now. So now if I want to make him disappear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this Mega Man comp. So this is the initial run. I'm going to move back one frame and I'm going to push Alt uh, close bracket right. Okay, so that will trim the comp to that part and then. For this bottom layer, I'm going to trim it when here. So it's Alt close bracket left. So when B and N to trim your work area, B is to the beginning, N is the end. Pretty straightforward. And then bam, 
you have your slide. Now I didn't uh, change the shadow, but if uh, I really wanted to, I would do that as well. All right, there we go. There is the race. He kind of gets the head up on me, but I mean, he kind of gets the lead on me, but that's okay. All right, I had the flu while I was shooting this. <laughs> and there we have it, guys. You now know how to animate sprites. So I hope you guys learned something. However, so I don't like to teach people things where they learn it and then they just do the same thing. Uh, I would actually love to see you guys apply what I, I've taught you. I mean, that's the whole reason why I teach you guys is so you can apply it. So show me what you can do using this tutorial. And please, think outside the box. Don't try and do what I did or do what you want to do. Do what you think is would be pretty cool. Please put it up as a video response. I'd love to check them out and I'll, I'll leave feedback for those of you who do. Please participate. I, I'd love for you guys to do that. You can get Adobe CS6 Master Collection for a subscription of, I think it's like 60 bucks a month right now. So it's a pretty good deal for those who want to try it. So you try it, you know, and then you get it. And if you don't like it, you're, only, you're, not, if you're not doing anything, don't pay the 60 bucks. You know, um, hey, beats the hell out of going out clubbing every night and partying and spending $200 on bottles. So, yeah. Before I go, don't forget to subscribe, um, follow me on Twitter, and like my Facebook page if you want to keep in touch of what's going on. Thanks again for all the support, guys. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot more things for this channel this year. So, till next time.